I'm an explorer. Ooh. I'm exploring. Okay. Yeah. I okay. think it's too much responsibility to be called innovator. <laughs> <laughs> We are here at the LinkedIn studios in the Empire State Building, and I'm here with Marie Goulin Merle, and I'm gonna say it my way, but you're gonna to have to tell me how it really That's is said. That's fine, whatever you like, Nadine. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here five years and with so many pronunciations. As long as people can understand my French accent, I'm fine. I can understand it perfectly, <laughs> and I love it. So Marie is not only the CMO of Calvin Klein, but now has taken on another role at the parent company. You're also the chief digital officer of both Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger. Yes, I am. So Marie, what's top of mind for Calvin Klein and Tommy Hilfiger right now? There is one which is uh, hyper-personalization mm -hmm. and what it means to unify personalization mm -hmm. uh, from product to loyalty to memberships to your online experience, your store experience. And it's it sounds quite easy when I'm saying it like this. <laughs> it's a lot of stitching and it's a lot of behind the scenes. That's why mm. having two jobs is useful. <laughs> uh, and I'm super excited by voice. Mm. I think it's gonna disrupt how uh, consumers choose brands and products, mm -hmm. how they prefer brands and products. Mm -hmm. The discovery piece is gonna be trickier for mm. brands mm -hmm. to emerge, especially mm -hmm. when you're in visual industries like mm -hmm. fashion or beauty. We know images, mm -hmm. we know videos, and we've, we're have we still learning videos, by the way, we can talk <laughs> about that. Uh, we're gonna have to learn voice. What's the voice of Calvin Klein? Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna make a sexy voice right now. <laughs> not now, it's a serious <laughs> video. So the expression of a brand through voice, mm -hmm. more than just like, find me the latest pair of jeans. Like, mm -hmm. how do I discover and, and love a brand through voice mm -hmm. before, uh, other players use voice mm, um, mm -hmm. to to work on brand preference. So that's that's what I'm working on. Because you are so innovative. I, I don't think I am. You don't think so? No. Everybody thinks you are. No, I think I'm a, I'm an explorer. Ooh. I'm exploring. Okay. Yeah. I okay. think it's too much responsibility to be called innovator. <laughs> All right, so you're exploring voice, you're stitching everything together at every single touch point of the customer journey behind the scenes, yes. and you're responsible for the outward branding of, of Calvin Klein. Klein. What is it that you love the most about that? I love that it's a 50-year-old brand, that everybody knows the brand, like 90% awareness. Mm -hmm. uh, many brands would kill to get 90% awareness, mm -hmm. but it's a also a brand that has to adapt to new ages. Mm -hmm. It's a brand that uh, was mastering print and outdoor, mm -hmm. uh, and a certain type of body sizes, for instance. So I'm very excited uh, by the exploration mm -hmm. of uh, diversity when it comes to body expression, mm -hmm. self-expression, outside of traditional media. And that's what I'm, I'm spending a lot of a lot of time on. So we just had our DNI council meeting here two nights ago, and so we and thank I missed you. It. You missed it, but <laughs> thank you for for doing what you're doing because it's such important work. Yes. Um, what do you think our big challenges are in the industry right now? So I keep getting that question around uh, brand and performance. Mm -hmm. How do you make choices between mm -hmm. your brand investments, your performance investments? It's a tricky question because it's a uh, it's creating silos within uh, organizations. Mm -hmm. It's opposing teams, it's mm -hmm. opposing budgets. I'm really not comfortable having you know, two buckets, two teams. And what I've been doing uh, has been to merge the teams so they work on one consumer journey. Mm. Going back to unification of the consumer experience. Okay, so any tips or tricks you're learning while you're doing that? I uh, don't have two teams. <laughs> they're <laughs> they're going to fight over budgets. Mm -hmm. uh, the conversion team, the performance team will use the fact that they have higher ROI and mm -hmm. the brand teams will talk about elevation of the brand. So I would say tip, no tip number one, have one team. Mm -hmm. Tip number two, use data as the neutralizer. Mm. and do not get into emotional debates mm -hmm. uh, between the two sides of the consumer journey. Mm -hmm. And maybe tip number three, upskill the teams. Mm. So the performance side of the team knows about the brand mm -hmm. and the brand team uh, understands uh, data and what it means to drive the, this last click. Okay, so speaking of upskilling, you've been a huge champion of training and development and performance uh, improvement for all of your team. But what about you? <laughs> <laughs> What's a great career tip that you've heard or have shared in your path? Yeah, so the best advice uh, I got was, I guess 10 years ago by one of the greatest mentors 
um, in brands, brand marketing. He said to me, come to work every day as if it is your first day at work. Mm. Don't ever get comfortable. Try to learn from the others, continue to learn and unlearn. Mm -hmm. um, learn from your teams. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you're not just there to guide your teams, you're also here to receive from your teams. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to be uncomfortable and learn um, and never settle for any sorts of status quo. And no, you never do because you're such an explorer. <laughs> 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 well, Marie, thank you so much for joining thank us today. You, Nadine. And thank you for joining us on Top of Mind. <laughs>